Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse and I am back for another hardware review and assistive technology video. Kind of a combined deal here. And this time we are going to be taking a look at one of the new uh, devices that people are soon hopefully going to be able to get their hands on. And uh, this is the NLS BARD, or the through the Talking Book program, this is the new Braille e-reader from the National Library Service. So if you are someone who has a BARD subscription, maybe you get the digital talking books on the cartridges, maybe you get them digitally through the BARD mobile app on Android or iOS, now they have a Braille e-reader. This has been kind of in the works for a while. They are starting to roll that out now. Um, I can't really say when and how they're gonna be rolled out um, specifically. You'll wanna check with your state's uh, National Library Service, their BARD program to see what um, their timeline is and, and how you can register to get one of these. These are going to be available at no cost uh, to the BARD patrons. So if you are eligible for that service, just like you would be eligible for a talking book machine, you would be eligible for, um, you could be eligible for this uh, Braille e-reader. And before I go any further, um, I know they are using two different devices. They're, the one that I'm gonna be showing you today we are using in Minnesota is the Humanware one. And then there's one, I believe it's through APH that some states are using. So I don't know really anything about that one other than <coughs> both devices are very similar in form and functionality. So with all of that out of the way, that's kind of your disclaimer, introduction stuff. Uh, let's take a look. So I already have it out of the box. Um, I'm not going to show you the top of the box just because it's got a label on there and I don't want to necessarily give away my, uh, a, my actual mailing address to everybody. But it's a nice uh, sturdy box that everything comes in. You get a um, little box. This is where the device would go. I already have, took it out because I was using it just a bit ago. Um, but you get a, bo a little box in here. It's got your USB-C. Um, yeah, it's got a, a USB-C on one end, a USB-A on the other, so you can plug it into this uh, AC adapter here. I've actually plugged mine into a USB hub, um, so I've got the USB cord connected to that instead of this AC adapter, but I'm going to keep this around because uh, I might need it. And then you have a, U a little USB adapter, kind of got a USB-A to like male to female adapter. Um, so if you ever need that type of functionality and I forgot to put these back in the box. So let me also grab, I will put them in there as we go. This is a braille device. So of course you get a braille user guide. Uh, this is the full user guide for the device, uh, in braille. You also get a Braille quick start guide. I'll put that back in the box here, keep everything together. And then you also, you also get a print quick start guide here. There we go. And I think that's mainly it. So um, you get your documentation, you get your cords, and you get the device itself. So let's hide this out of the way here, and we will show you the device proper. Here it is. This is the humanware version. And uh, there you go. You can take a look at it there. Uh, this is basically a kind of a uh, feature, like a stripped down version of the Brilliant 20. So if you're familiar with the Brilliant 20 or 40 devices, especially the BI, like the BI 40X series that's been out for the last couple of years, 
this is really like that. Um, but like I said, its features are locked down a little bit because they're, they're really concentrating on making this a simple e-reader. Um, it's mainly meant for reading books and documents. It's not necessarily meant to be even a basic note taker like you would have on something like the Braille Edge or even the Brilliant or even like the newer Focus, uh, fifth generation Focus 40 displays. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. So the device itself on the back, you've got an SD card slot. So if you wanna copy documents or books from your computer uh, in Braille, in BRF format or whatever, or, you know, you, and it supports a lot of different formats. You can read Word documents, PDF files, text files, BRF files. Um, I can't remember if it does EPUB. I, I read the list the other day and I forgot, um, but it does do all of those like DOCX files. So you can read those. So you can put an SD card in the back it also does have internal storage, which is just what I'm using right now. I've probably got about, oh, half a dozen books on here right now uh, that I put on the other day. So, yeah, um, SD card on the back, and it's a regular SD card, not a micro or anything like that. And that's all that's on the back. On the left side, you've got a USB-C uh, port that is for charging. That is in the back left. And then coming up forward, you've got your little button with a little bump on it that is your power slash lock button and then you have a full size usb a port because you can also put in a usb thumb drive and pull in files or read files or copy files to the internal memory um, from a usb flash drive that is uh what's on the left on the front, if you're familiar with humanware products like the Brilliant or even like the Braille Note series, you have your series of thumb keys. You have your up, starting from the left, you've got up, left, and then the circular middle button, kind of an enter, and then you have a uh, right and down. And what's nice is on they, they're t they have a tactile bump. So on the left one, you have got a little raised line on the top. The second one in, you've got a line on the left. And then on the right side of the little circular button, you've got one on the right, and then a one on the down. So it, it kind of just tells you right there what they do. Um, this is a 20 cell display, which I'll get into in a moment. On the right hand side, there are things, but on this particular display, they currently don't do anything. I don't know if this is gonna be expanded upon in the future or not, um, but you have on the right side on the back, there is a headphone jack that's got a little rubber, kind of a stopper in it to keep dust out because that's not being used right now. And then you have a basically what should be two volume buttons for sound effects or speech, but there is no speech and there is no, they do have beeps on it, but the volume buttons really don't do anything. And like I said, the reason that is, is this is basically, they took a brilliant 20-cell uh, display and took out some of the features to make it more of a streamlined e-reader. So I'll talk more about that because I do have some thoughts and some suggestions for possible future updates. On the top of the device is where you have your Perkins keyboard, your one, two, three, and then seven on the left or your backspace key, seven dot seven or backspace, and then four, five, six, and then dot eight or enter on the right. You've got your 20 braille cells here and they feel pretty good. I don't have any problem with the way the braille feels. Yes, I can read braille. Uh, I probably don't do it as much as I should, but I can read it and I'm glad I do know it. Um, but above all of your uh, each cell, you do have routing buttons. There's been a couple smaller displays that I've seen that lack the routing buttons, so I'm glad that they do include that on this display. Um, and then on the bottom, top, on the top front of it, you've got two space bars. They do the same thing. You can use whatever thumb you want to, but they are space bars, so you're good to go there. And a lot of times I'm gonna be referring to like cords when I talk about something. 
that is basically doing some kind of a Perkins combination, like a letter combination with the space bar. So H chord for home, you know, or M chord for menu. And it's just typing the letter M and then the space bar. So, and like I said, if you're familiar with conventions of braille displays, note takers in the past, you'll catch on. You'll probably be, be able to almost intuitively figure out most of it yourself. Um, yeah, there's some commands in there that you'll probably want to look in the manual for um, because I didn't know a couple of them myself. Um, but even just turning it on and playing with it, I was able to figure out the vast majority of it pretty easily, especially once I looked up, oh, okay, there's these couple chord commands that I really want to know. That is the hardware. Um, it comes in this really nice case. Actually, when it comes in the box, it is out of its case just because of the way the box is and the way it fits in the packaging. But basically, on the back where the SD card is, if you feel underneath, there's a, a little um, strip kind of a thing that you just you pull out from the back, you slide it in from the back, and then you just slide this little uh, pleathery piece right underneath it, and it's secure in there. It's pretty snug but it's super easy to take in it's super easy to put in there it's super easy to take out i've uh, worked with some other braille displays and braille display cases where like you have to put you have to shove it in there and then there's like little snaps and things to secure it and boy man i have to tell you those things are just a real pain to get that just they're so snug um that it it can be really hard to get that case uh put in but the case in this, I really like. It's it's nice, it's got a little hooks for the lanyard, so you can wear it around your neck or over your shoulder, whatever. When you close it, it's got a little magnetic, uh, little magnets in there, so it'll stay shut. And there you go, that is the device itself. So again, you're not really gonna hear anything because there's no speech, but I'll kind of walk you through some of what is on here and what isn't on here, because there was a, <laughs> A couple surprises that I was kind of surprised are not on here. So I'm going to fire it up. It's in sleep mode right now. And we're on. Okay, we got book reader. You've got file manager. Date and time. Just a simple date and time thing there. Braille display. That's where you go. Um, you can use this as a braille display with your computer, PC or Mac, JAWS, NVDA, voiceover. You can use it with uh, iOS with VoiceOver, which I've done with my personal iPhone. I've paired it with that, and it seems to work perfectly fine. Um, settings, we'll pop into there in a little bit. Online services, there's a couple of them in there. We'll go in there in a moment, too. Battery info. User guide. Power off. And then it'll wrap around. So your book reader... Pretty obvious, that is where you're gonna spend the vast majority of your time, especially once you get everything set up. Um, this is where you can read things from your bookshelves. Currently, as far as um, online services folders, it supports NLS BARD, obviously, and then it also supports NFB Newsline. Now, I have not set that up on this device. I do have a Newsline account, but I have to look it up on my phone because I, I don't remember what the heck my username and password for that is even anymore. Um, it's just set up on my phone. So every time I have to look for that, I'm like, I don't know. But, um, and then you can also find like, if you have your documents, you can also have other folders in here. So like I could, like I said, you could put Word documents in there. You could put text files in there. Um, you could pull braille files from other sources uh, if they were made and you could put them in here so book reader um and when you're in a book you know you can you can navigate by i don't remember all the exact keys but a lot of your note taker commands sort of work so like you know dot one two three chord will go to the very top four five six chord will go to the bottom and then you can do i believe it's like dot one and dot four chord go by like I forget the order of them, but like dot one and four and then dot two and five, um, like one goes by line, one goes by paragraph, one goes by like section. Um, so that's actually pretty nice. 
you can, like I said, you can add multiple bookmarks in it. Um, I haven't really played with that yet, but I did read the manual um, a little bit. In addition to the manual being in Braille and in the quick start guide that you get with it, you can also get, if you, let's say you have the Bard mobile app, you can get the Braille e-reader manual from Bard and listen to it on the Bard mobile app. Like if you wanted to listen to it via audio, it is there and they will tell you like a lot of your keyboard shortcuts and guide you through everything. It's really nicely formatted and you can jump around and get to what section you need. So book player or uh, book reader, file manager. This is where, again, like I said, if I had an SD card on here or a thumb drive in here, I could look at my internal storage. I could look at my thumb drive. I could look at my SD card. I can copy things from one place to another. Maybe I want to put something from an SD card onto the internal memory of the device or vice versa. I do that here. Uh, date and time. Again, there's really not much really to say about that, but it is uh, date and time, basically. Braille display. As I said, you can um, connect it to a computer. You can connect it to an uh, iPhone, iPad. Not, didn't really say anything about Android. I know Android is starting to get better with like Braille a little bit. Like I know Braille back is kind of, sort of, kind of a thing now. Um, but I've officially only really heard like JAWS, NVDA, and then VoiceOver for Mac or iOS. That's what it's guaranteed to be supporting right now. Not sure about Narrator. I didn't say anything about Narrator, but I would be curious to see if it worked for that. And if you've ever used a Braille display like with an iPhone, it actually works really well. Um, the, work, the way it works with, uh, like I've used other Braille displays and I just pretty much the same exact way. Like it, it works just the way um, that I would expect it to. Now you can also pair it with multiple devices. I have not done that yet. You can pair it with, what is it, like four or five Bluetooth devices and then one USB device. So you could have it connected to your computer via USB, and then you could switch back and forth between your computer and your phone or your computer and your tablet or how whatever. I have not done that yet, um, but it's something that you can do if you want to use it with multiple devices. That functionality I really appreciate. Uh, let's see, Braille display, settings. I'll go in here really quick. I'm not going to go through everything, but let me go to the, let's go to the top here. Um, so we've got user settings. There's a bunch of stuff under there, like about how the Braille display, your cursor. There's just a bunch of different things under there. Um, you've got your Braille profile. So you can say, do you want to have it contracted, uncontracted, computer Braille, that kind of a thing. Wi-Fi, um, I have connected to my router so that I can log into my Bard um, account and download books directly to the device. Now, what I will say about the Wi-Fi is it has been a little bit sketchy. Like, I leave it on, um, but if I want to go, like, either I want to look for a book or I checked for an update earlier today... And sometimes it'll just say like, oh, not connected. And then I'll go to like the Wi-Fi settings and then it'll be like, oh, already connected. And then it'll work. And then, but then I'll go back into the thing. It'll say, oh, unable to connect or whatever. And then it says, do you want to connect? I'm like, yes. So the Wi-Fi has been a little weird, a little finicky, um, but it does work. And another note about that, when you're entering Wi-Fi, like, um, passwords for your router or use them and passwords for BARD or um, NLR for Newsline. I, ha I found myself having to use computer Braille because I tried it and contracted and I know what the codes are, but I tried it several times and it just didn't work. I switched it to computer Braille and that syntax for whatever reason, I've always always hated typing things like usernames, email addresses, passwords. I've hated typing that stuff in Braille because I've never consistently gotten it to work. And it's especially frustrating when like, especially if you're logging into a website where, 
oh, if you screw up your password three times or five times, it locks you out. Well, that's just great. So um, thankfully I did get my NLS to work. Um, so there is that. But uh, those are your Wi-Fi settings. Bluetooth, again, you can pair it with your uh, computer or your phone. And when I did it, um, you, you, like I said, you just go in there and then under, under remember, under uh, iOS, you have to go under voiceover and then Braille. Don't just go to Bluetooth. You have to do it through voiceover because then it will connect properly as a Braille display. Some people kind of forget that. So, uh, and then we have software update. And uh, that is one I just did earlier, which is kind of funny because the manual said it was just under settings, but before I updated, it was actually under about. So if you get a device and you go under settings and you don't see software update, you want to go to about and then go down a few lines and you might find it there, which is where I originally found it. But now it's moved to the top level of uh, the settings menu. And then you have about and then close. So let's close that. And then I'll go down to uh, online services. Let's go in there. We have two choices right now, NLS Bard, NFB Newsline and close. Let's see if it'll actually, uh, let's see if it'll actually log me into Bard. Let's try it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, okay. Okay, good. It did right away. Most recent. So I can do most popular, most recent. I thought I did that already. Oh, wait. Oh, most recent. Oh, magazines. Okay. <coughs> um, Browse categories, browse magazines. I can search the catalog or the collection. Um, and then I can look at my wish list. So if you want to make this a little bit easier, you could, let's say, do a search on your phone or whatever, add it to your wish list, and then download it um, or do it through on your computer and then just go into your wish list and then download a book from there that way. Uh, previous downloads and then you can remove your account which I don't want to do or we can go back so I'm not really gonna do a search but I mean it, it's pretty intuitive I mean it works really well it's not a problem at all um, let's see let's see power off you that's basically uh, the device you notice one thing that is not on here is there was nothing like a notepad or an editor, which originally I was kind of surprised by because I figured at the very least, you know, I, I did not expect this to be a full note taker, far from it. But I think it would really benefit from the simple notepad that is on something like the Brilliant or like a focus display. You know, maybe it can only write in, in plain text. Maybe you only can write in like just BRF or whatever. But, you know, I, like I said, I know that there, you know, I talked to somebody about this who works at the, um, um, works at our communication center who works with these and works with uh, NLS. And, you know, they wanna keep this simple. They wanna keep it as an e-reader. Um, and that's what their focus is. And I totally get that. You know, you want to make it, you know, you, you want to make it useful for that purpose. But I would argue that this is a nice portable device. And if I'm out somewhere and I want to read something, I can. But a sighted person can just go grab any sheet of paper and a pen. They can write on their hand. They can, like, they have tons of different ways that they can um, write down somebody's phone number or write a note or whatever. And, you know, like I said, you don't need really any formatting, but a basic notepad editor would just be like, it would be really nice to have um, because it already has a file manager. 
it already has got, you know, it's got the book player, it's got the, the file manager, so you could just have a, a notes folder and you could add different note files, just a couple of basic note files in there, you know, new note, edit note, delete note, I mean, simple. Um, because, yes, you can do a slate and stylus if you're blind, but maybe you don't have one with you, but you have your reader and you want to take down a note and you want to save it. You know, like I said, a sighted person can grab anything and write on it. A blind person does not have that luxury. So just being able to afford some sort of basic note taking thing, you, I mean, it's not, you already have the key entry. You already have, you know, you have the Perkins keys, you have the file system. Um, I really think that they should, I truly think that they should add that. Um, because I think it would just be a really nice thing to have. Like I said, I know another thing that, the, you know, they don't want to take away business from selling you the brilliant Braille displays. But I also sort of argue that, okay, um, I know you're focusing this to be an e-reader, but one of the major complaints that many people have is that actual reading literacy, uh, and I don't mean just listening, but like reading, you know, a sighted person can read print or listen to audio. A low vision person can read uh, print or audio. Um, but a totally blind user, if they are only reading by audio, you don't learn, let's say, spelling. You don't learn, like, you don't learn formatting. You don't learn punctuation. You don't, there's, there's things that you, by physically reading, whether it's with your fingers or with your eyes, that is important, especially as you're learning to read and you're improving your reading skills. Um, you know, because like, I can't tell you how many, how many people I see on YouTube comments or Twitter or anything, emails, like, I, you know, I, I know that there's a lot of, like a lot, I get a lot of comments from blind users and like, there's no capitalization. There's very minimal to no punctuation. There's spelling errors. I mean, I know some of that can be due to, oh, I'm just dictating. But even if you're going to dictate, you should proofread before you send. Because, you know, the people do, you know, that that is, people do find, you know, people... I don't want to say judge you, but they kind of do. Like, if you want to be taken seriously, you should have a base level of writing skills. Whether it's an email, a text message, um, a social media post, whatever. And, you know, because everything Braille is so dang expensive. You know, I mean, a Perkins Brailler is, what, 700 bucks, give or take? Yeah, you can get a slate and stylus for dirt cheap, but not everyone wants to use those all the time. And got, you know, if you want a braille display, yes, you have something like the Orbit Reader, which is um like what is it, four or five hundred bucks now? Which is decent, but it's still, you know, a lot more expensive than a sighted person's pen and paper. So I think that, you know, having the notepad um, and just having some of those features, yeah, okay, it might cut into human wear's um, bottom line as far as selling 20 cell brilliant displays, but it's better in the long run because it's going to afford, if a blind user can get a braille display through NLS, you know, and at least have a way to read braille digitally, because again, hard copy braille, yeah, it's great. But, you know, God forbid you want to have a library, you, you got to have your own warehouse to store all the crap because Braille books are ginormous. Um, somebody, when I learned Braille back in the day, um, when I was in like junior high, someone thought it would be a good idea to, hey, you should get a Braille Bible. And they, they signed me up for this Braille Bible. And it was literally like a shelf and a half, six foot long shelves just for the Bible. Uh, you know, I mean, a regular novel is like two, three, four volumes, depending on how big the novel is. So 
the best, the, one of the coolest things about a braille display is I can still physically read braille, but I can have dozens, if not hundreds of books on one device. So, you know, if you want to get braille literacy up, and I think it's a great idea that BARD is doing this, the National Library Service is doing this, um, I kind of wish that they had a few more features that were in the brilliant display that this is based off of, um, or the APH one that other states or some other states are using. Um, and here's the other thing what I would suggest is, okay, again, you want to keep it simple. Totally get it. Totally get it. Right now we have a digital um, talking book player and you can get two models. You can get the base model that has play, pause, um, fast forward, rewind. It's just got a few basic keys and that's it. Great for seniors, great for beginner users. Um, and then you can get the advanced player, which has the same controls, but it also has like chapter skips and bookmarks and a few other odds and ends that the basic player doesn't have. Well, all of that could be just controlled in software. You could just Basically, it would come, the way I see it is, it would come with a base mode, like you, it starts in basic mode when you get it, and then somebody would have to tell you, like, or you would have to enter some kind of, probably rather, I wouldn't even say do it in the settings, because I don't want, you know, you wouldn't necessarily want people to, um, especially, like, users who can get confused really easily, you wouldn't want them to necessarily accidentally enable that advanced mode but maybe you know there's a you learn about from your library or um how whomever there's a a, a see key press a keyboard shortcut that you can hit maybe it's like hitting some weird dot combination or a couple of a series of hot keys and then it enables the advanced mode so when you take it out of the box, you get it like it is now. You can read books with it, you can read Newsline with it, and that's it. But for more nerdy people that wanna have the feature that, like I said, you have the volume buttons on the right here. You have the headphone jack, so you know the newer updates of the Brilliance, you're gonna have audio. Um, I kinda wish, or like, you know, even be able to put NLS audiobooks on here. Because if I could download an NLS audiobook, audiobook um, I think it would be cool to have a beginner and an advanced mode. Um, because that would help a lot of people. And again, I don't even remember what the statistic is. But, you know, everyone keeps going by, like, what is it? I wish I could remember the statistic. But, you know, people say that, you know, the vast, basically the vast majority or a good chunk of blind or like legally blind, low vision users don't know Braille. Um, and if you wanna up Braille literacy, the first thing that you have to do is make it affordable. You know, um, cause most people aren't gonna run out and buy a two, $3,000 display. But if they can at least, you know, like I said, they may still wanna get a 40 cell display for serious working, for serious reading. But to be able to get a subsidized um, kind of an initial Braille display reader. I mean, because like the Braille display, they didn't cut back on any of that. That stuff is all there. You can use this sucker with your computer uh, or your iOS device. Fine. So I kind of wish they didn't take out some of the... Um, the other internal features that the Brilliant has just because it really makes kind of my first Braille display, my easy to obtain Braille display, once these become more widely available, once they manufacture enough to really spread them out to all the NLS patrons who want them or need them, this is a fantastic way to get that Braille literacy up and, you know, maybe they read Braille in school, but then they graduate and they're like, well, I don't, I don't have the school paying for crap for me all the time anymore. So then I just don't use Braille anymore because it's expensive. 
um, you can keep adult people, uh, you know, you can keep adults reading Braille. So, I, I mean, I know I went on a kind of a side tangent rant, but I think it's really, I think it ties into the review of this device because it is a very solid device. I really like the quality of this device. The keys are comfortable. They're like, it feels ergonomic. I have big hands. I don't have any problem at all typing on this thing. I wish I could, like other than typing my username and password, I can't type on it. I wish I could, you know, I mean, I wish I could. I mean, yes, I can connect it to my phone and, and type in pages or an email or whatever, but like, yeah, I wish I could type on, on a notepad in the device itself. Um, but yeah, like I said, check with your local library service, uh, your NLS, if you're a BARD member already, or you want to sign up for BARD Talking Books. Um, you know, this as these things are starting to roll out, uh, you may also be eligible for a Braille e-reader device, such as this. And I wanted to cover it because I think it's a really great thing that they're doing. And, you know, I've, and for me, again, the other thing is, even for myself, I learned Braille in junior high. They didn't teach it to me when I was young. That's a whole other story. Um, but I read it a fair bit in high school, a little bit in college. But again, I wish I would have learned it younger so I could have gotten my Braille reading speed up faster and really used Braille all my life. Um, and so, I, like, I would like to use Braille more, but I never saw myself paying, you know, a thousand bucks or more for a device that I may or may not use much at all. Um, so would I invest in a Braille display for myself? No, probably not, because I have the luxury of I can use large print, I can use audio, and if it's readily at hand, I can use Braille. Um, but now that I have this e-reader, I can use it to demo to people at work. I can read things on it if I want to. This would be a great thing if I have to jot down a couple notes. Hell, even when I do videos, maybe, you know, like when I have an outline for like E3 or an end of the year video, I might just write up a document, dump it on a SD card, and then boom. And then, you know, like when I always have to pause and look at my phone, now I can just turn this baby on and read it on my Braille display. So for like presentations and stuff like that, there's actual uses like that even I would use it for now that I have one. So... Uh, yeah, this is a great little device, um, well-built, well-designed. Hopefully, um, hopefully they do unlock maybe some of the features or maybe give us an advanced mode. You, know, you have your basic, um, ba basic mode for a lot of users. And then for nerds like me, um, maybe, they, maybe they will consider um, doing a more advanced mode. But that is the NLS... Humanware e-reader, um, like I said, they're using a couple different models, and this is the Humanware one, but the Humanware e-reader, and I have to say, I rather like it. I think they did a really good job, and I hope more and more people are able to get this device and start reading some Braille. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you did. Follow me on Twitter at BGFH79 twitch.tv slash illegally cited illegally cited.com and right here on youtube so until next time i will chat with everybody again later